Welcome to another episode of the Bellied Up Podcast. I am Charlie Behrens. I am here bellied up to the beautiful Toad Lake store. I'm here with my buddy Miles. Charlie, how you doing? Miles, I'm doing great. Nice to see you. Nice to see you too. Yeah. <laughs> is it? Yeah. What the, that's I a like cool shirt. Wisconsin shirt. This is a cool Wisconsin shirt. I've never shirt. seen a shirt like that, and now I want one really bad. Yeah, here, n- shout it out. WDT Wisconsin Design Team yep. is what it stands for. So it I, says corn fed on there too. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. I was in I was walking down State Street in Madison, Wisconsin. I had a show there and they someone ran up to me. Yeah. If you go and, to their Instagram, was Wisco Design Team. Yeah. It came up to me and he says, Hey, you want a shirt? And how often does someone run up to you on the street and say you want a shirt? They saw me pass. And they says, You look like a guy who needs a shirt. Were you shirtless at the time? I was not shirtless, <laughs> but apparently the shirt I was wearing was not cool enough. Sell me this shirt. Well, yeah. to go into this restaurant, you need a shirt. Okay, I guess I got to buy one. See? Supply yeah. and demand. Put a t shirt <laughs> store right next to a restaurant. That's it. Yeah. No shit. Oh my gosh, Miles. I knew you weren't just complimenting my what shirt. What do you mean? I knew Miles, is this the new Ope shirt from you betcha? It I is. love yeah, this. Wow. I actually coming out of the um the pisser unit, I saw you wearing this shirt and I was gonna mention it there, but uh you were having a you Yeah. You, you mean you have your own Ope shirt? And I said, hey, we're the guys of the school of Ope. I said, I need my own. Absolutely. So I love it. You it's can find really this nice. Ope shirt at OUBetcha.com. Yeah. Um, I'm a dad up? now, not to brag. You know, yeah, I like we've been that. talking about that. Yeah, you are a dad now. And I have started to Cute realize kid. that I may or may not be starting to turn into my dad a little bit. Okay. Here's an example. And this isn't so much with my kid, but I was at work the other day. Yeah. And I pulled a classic my dad move. Oh. Uh-uh. Yeah. So basically, when I worked for my dad, worked concrete, it would be like, hey, when's the concrete showing up today? And he would go, whenever we're ready for it. And you're like, okay, well, that doesn't give me any direction. <laughs> There's no, what time do you think that's going to be? And it'll be like, well, if you work faster, it'll be earlier, you know? And it's like, same scenario. It's uh, when you want that video edited by as soon as possible. And you're like, okay, well, that doesn't give me a time that I need to. And I found myself starting to do that a little bit. And it's freaking me out a little bit. Is there anything in your life where, you know, you're starting to turn into your dad? Yes, there is. Yes, there is. Uh, before I get to mine, I just want to kind of piggyback off yours. What's that teaching you about yourself? Did you did it annoy you enough when your dad did it that now that you recognize it in yourself that you're going to change course? I'm going to try. I'm going to try my best to be more clear in the direction than just. You know, when you get it done, that's yeah. when we're going to do it. Because it doesn't quite give you that uh, that rush. Now, the question is, why were you trying to figure out when the, the concrete came? Was it, be, was it so you could kind of map out your day a little bit? Take a little bit that of is a longer a good question. break? You know, it's a peace of mind thing, you know? Okay. It, it's also a, I feel like, hey, I got to get it done by this time, you know? It gives you a little motivation, exactly. something to work toward. Yeah, if you're just working just to work, sometimes that's not exactly the most motivate motivating thing in the world. Yeah, so maybe, uh, you know, you learn uh, you learn this stuff. That's interesting. Here's something my dad does. Um, my dad will just be sitting there. Everything will be quiet. He'll be working or something on his computer or, or he'll be, you know, fixing something. And he'll just go. Mm. <laughs> and I've started to do it. What, what do you what, what does that mean? What is what is it? It's mean? just it's just uh, it's just it's pent up anxiety or annoyance or something or just just talking to talk it's a sign of frustration mm, not necessarily sometimes it's just like uh all right i finish this task on to the next one Mm. (laughs) you know and there's different modes now if it's if he just gets done yelling at you it's we get just knock it off Mm. i'm gonna go you know it's kind of just blowing off some steam but sometimes it's it's calmer it's 
<laughs> you know, it, it's like, all right, what's next? Or I'm about ready to go to bed. It's good. Yeah. And, and I've started to do it too. Is it a, is it like a, this is the end of the conversation noise as well? You know, like me and you were talking and then you're just sitting there and you go. Mm. Yeah. It, yeah. So it could be like, you, you're both discussing politics and just, you know, how annoying their politicians are, you know, typical politics talk. Yep. And you, you someone says some definitive or that may sit or not sit well with them. And it's just, <laughs> and then you, that is, uh, you can get up and go okay, at that point, yeah, yeah. you know, you are dismissed is what that means. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it, it kind of feels good. It's, it, I'm not going to lie to you. I'm not mad that I do it. I, it's almost like, uh, like when you're a kid, you're like, oh, I want to get to a point where I can do that. And it sounds convincing, you know? Yeah, and saying so much without saying anything. Yeah, you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's what I found about about dads as they get older. They're always trying to find ways to say less. Yeah, until you get to the point like my grandpa, he just can't hear anything. So even if you talk to him, he doesn't say anything because he can't hear you. <laughs> it's like he's, he's how's it going? And he's just like, well, I'm going outside. You know? <laughs> Uh, that's an evolutionary tactic. Gra- my is grandpa, losing who was on the I was, podcast, I was yeah, going to say because uh, he, he says a lot. Well, he, he's yeah, a chatty Kathy. But if you, yeah, but he says what he wants. It depends on the context, right? Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. Uh, he, when he met my kid for the first time, this is all he said. So we want to take a generational photo, you know. My grandparents, my mom, and me, and my kid. It's oh yeah, yeah it's, it's cute. Yeah, yeah. First, yeah. He walks into the house and just goes, "Yeah, we're the ones that started it all." <laughs> and then he sat down with my kid on the couch for two minutes. We did the photo op, and then he stood up and walked and started going. He just went, "Yeah, he's gonna get bigger," and then walked out of the house. <laughs> Man, a few words, you know. That's the most profound thing I think you can say in that <laughs> situation. It's going to get bigger. <laughs> <laughs> and I can't wait for that someday when I'm 90 years old, God willing. You know, you, no one bats an eye. You, you just say random things. You, you just know? state simple truths. Yep, that's that, it. You just, yeah, that's a baby. Yeah. <laughs> just walk out the drawer. That uh, beer's going to be gone Yep. before you know it. <sighs> So, well, should we do what we always do? Mm. Mm. Yeah, so more of a. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Now we're both going to be doing it. My dad's going to be so proud. Let's take some callers. My name's Cal. Sorry, I was trying to use my AirPod, but it wasn't working. For me. No worries. No worries. You said your name is Cal? Uh, sorry, Cal. Like, uh, like the lettuce. Yeah. Oh, Kale. Yeah, sorry. Okay, Kale. Well, why don't you belly up to the bar with us? Tell us what's on your mind. Well, I've got a I've got a lot of friends that are uh wanting to do some double dates, but they just can't seem to pull any girls. So they I I need some help on how I can be a good wingman here, you know? Okay, so one not to brag, you got yourself a girl, correct? Well, I, I do. Yeah, believe it or not. Are you married, girlfriend, fiance? Uh, so so uh, I'm actually 17 years of age, but so I'm not married. You're 17. That complicates all the advice we're going to give yes, you. Yes, it really, <laughs> yeah, well, it really it does. I had a whole host yeah. of things that I was going to maybe say. Thank you for clarifying that yeah, before we for, were in some yeah, legal trouble. Yeah, figure I figured it's good we get that out of the way. Yeah, okay. Uh, first question that pops in my head is, why are you so worried about going on double dates at 17 years old? Well, I'm just trying to help out my buddies, you know. You guys are 17. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What Are they more, well, in, are yeah, they more they, interested in Fortnite than hanging out with girls or what? Um, a, lot of, a lot of them are, yeah. And what's so wrong with that, Kale? Well, there's nothing that's wrong with that. They just, well, so see, here's the predicament is they, they all would like some, uh, they would all like some female interaction in their life, but they just, they don't know how to get it. And so I'm trying to be of assistance <laughs> if I can, you know, you sound like you're 30. 
<laughs> you sound like you're 30. I sound like I'm 30. Is that yeah. what you said? Yeah. You know, I actually get told a lot that I'm really old. Okay. Or I sound like I'm really old. What do you? So, well, hold on. How did you meet your girlfriend? Uh, I uh, I asked her on a date. At at school? Well, yeah. 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 Okay. <laughs> well, is do you say well? Where like what class? Where in school? How did it happen? Was Give it us. At, was well, it, oh, was well, it at I, her locker? I, I didn't ask her. I didn't ask. Oh no 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 no. I, uh, well, I so it was for uh for a dance. Hey Bronco, you want to go close that door for me? <laughs> did you just call someone? Dance. Hang on, pause. So did, I, uh, pause. Did you just call that guy Bronco? <laughs> That's his name. <laughs> so Bronco Kale, and Kale, Kale and Bronco are chilling, playing Fortnite on on their summer break. No, we're 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 working right now. Oh, well, where are you working at? We're uh, we're beekeepers, believe it or not. You're beekeepers. No, no this way. is this yeah. just keeps was, getting more and more. This is the <laughs> onion that just keeps peeling. Hey, is Bronco your brother by chance? No, he's he's the boss's son. Do you mind if I put you on speaker so I can use both my yeah, yeah, go put us on speaker. It's just zzz. okay. All right, boys. If you can't hear me, let me know. I'll figure something else out. What are you doing while you're talking to us? Well, we're uh, so we got these pallets that uh, we're putting what's called loading boards on them, and we put them around uh, like honey boxes when we strap them down, or like underneath boxes so the honey doesn't spill. And we're just banding them up so we can store them. Oh, that's okay. great. I like that. Yeah, we can count each one you're standing up. It's nice. So what is, so you're wondering how you're going to help your guy buddies get girlfriends. Is that what you're wondering? Well, at least, I don't know, you just help them out a little bit. You know, whatever you can do to help me with that. All right. All right, Charlie, let's, uh, I want you to close your eyes and pretend you're back in high school. Okay. How are you going to help your other high school friend get a girlfriend? I was not good at this in high school. Um, uh, uh, Cripes. Cripes. Okay, I'll go. What? I I just dropped something, but it does suck that you weren't good at that in high school. (laughs) Yeah, you you weren't good at it like Kale is. Kale pulls. I mean, clearly Kale is. With a game that. uh, He's reeling and dealing in high school. Yeah. A name Um, like Kale, you're going to. So if I'm in high school and I'm trying to be a good wingman, I am probably starting a rumor that one person likes another person. Remember that? It was so and so. I like the way you're thinking. Uh, Charlie likes Miranda. You know, I heard that. You're maybe in the, in the, at lunch in the cafeteria and now you just spill that information out. Plant the seed. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. I do like that. Now I've got to ask with all the technology going on, do kids still write notes? Um, I, I honestly, I have no idea. I can't confirm or deny that. What do you mean you can't confirm or deny it, dude? You're in well, school. Well, I mean, Who are we going to get? Well, I mean, I don't have enough. Like, I don't know if people do that. I don't know. Okay. Maybe. You, I, not that I've seen. You've okay. never seen. not so writing notes you're gonna anymore. You're going to accidentally send a Snapchat to the wrong person saying that Charlie likes Miranda. Right? That's You guys use Snapchat? Okay, I see what you're saying. Um, I don't, but a lot of people do. Well, you're giving us a lot to work with here, Kale. Um, I'm I'm trying my best, boys. No, you keep putting those pallets on that. The honey is serious business. So I'm gonna think back to when I was a high schooler. If I was with my girlfriend, I wanted as much alone time with my girlfriend in high school as virtually possible. And you're wanting to go on double dates. What's what's the real root of this? That's, that's true. What? Sorry. Say yeah, that again. What's the real root of wanting to go on double dates? Uh, I don't know. A lot of my buddies just have very strict parents, you know. Do you have non-strict parents? I I don't know. I wouldn't say non-strict, but they're very very loving and forgiving parents. So you're having the parties at your house, then, is what you're saying? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> okay. All right. But Charlie, it, were, it, Charlie, were you allowed to have parties growing up? Oh God, I had twelve. Kids grow up. The house was never empty. That's true. Um, I think a party with a friend would be a party with the whole family. Yeah, that's true. Exactly. So listen, you you've got you you're trying to get your your motivation here. How long have you been dating your girlfriend? Oh, uh, 
nine months. Nine months. And we cut you off before I cut you off. Where did you guys meet? Uh, so there was a, there was a school dance and, and I asked her to do it. And then she, she asked me on another date and that's how that happened. Okay. I like oh, it. Christ. <laughs> Disaster. You just dropped a pallet. Did you get stung by a bee? I haven't yet today, but I did a whole bunch yesterday or the day before. A lot of a lot of epi pens getting thrown around at this job. I like it. All right, I got the solution. Uh, yeah. Kale, I mean, I'm not I'm not allergic, so I don't ever have to use the epi pen. But Bronco here had to use one yesterday. <laughs> well, sorry to hear that, Bronco. <laughs> Bronco was almost not bucking anymore. I can tell you that. Close call. Well, he just he just like a fan. Is, he is, just held my hand and is Bronco there? Like by the way, birth, can we know, talk to Bronco? Oh yeah, here he is. There you go, Bronco. Hello, Bronco. You there? Oh, what? <laughs> what, yeah, okay. what are you doing working at a beekeeping job, being allergic to bees? Um. Uh, my, my uncle, family business, business. It's a family business, you know. You <laughs> risk it all for the family. That's yeah. how it goes. So, I didn't know I was allergic to like a month ago. So, <laughs> well, glad you've changed course. Have you fired up your resume now, knowing you are allergic to bees? No, I should though. Yeah, I mean, it's just you're constantly living in a state of thrill. I could die at any moment, and maybe that's what keeps you there. I could. Oh, we got plenty of epipens here. Just give me another one. They get back to work. Is what happened yesterday? So you're not even getting the day off after getting stung by a bee and getting stabbed with a no, I know, epipen. No, no. So I work. I work seven more hours after that. <laughs> <laughs> and how old are you, Bronco? Sixteen. Okay. They just, you know, they don't make kids like they used to. Bronco's one of the, the you know, he's one of the, 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 my dad would be very proud of Bronco. He'd be way more proud of Bronco than he is of me. You know, it, with a name like Bronco, you really, you really got to live up to that situation. Well, is so. that your God given name or is that a nickname? Oh, well, God given name. I love it. That's, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> what do you ever guy. wonder why your name Bronco Bronco? Um, no, I, I, I do actually wonder why. I don't, I don't know why, but I wonder all the time. You ever ask? Uh, I do ask them, and they, they don't even know why they named me Bronco. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. All right. Yeah, we'll leave it at that. You're 16. <laughs> um, hey, Bronco, do you have a girlfriend or any idea how to get Kale's friends uh, to talk to? Yeah, wait. Is Kale talking about Bronco right, right now while he's in the room? Turns out I am that friend. You are. Yeah. Okay. Well, Bronco, wh what, do you want to do you want to hang out with girls? Yes. Okay. Well, what what's what? Why haven't you been able to hang out with girls and talk to girls? <laughs> they scare me. Okay. <laughs> they scare. You can't even just. Do you, How can I help make Bronco more comfortable around? Uh, people of the female variety. Okay. I mean, with with a name like Bronco, you shouldn't have any fear. I think what he does, Charlie, is you got to lead in with the B thing. Oh, yeah, he's a B. Oh, I like the way you boys are thinking. Yeah, you just... Lead in with the beekeeping. You maybe... Uh, Woo! Maybe you just lead... Bronco just about brought the whole building down, in case you boys are wondering. How? He just about KO'd the ceiling with uh, with the forklift, but it's okay. We're good. We didn't get crushed. Anyway, sorry to interrupt you. Resume. Should I even ask if he's certified on that thing? Uh, no, no one, no one that works here is certified. That's the wrong answer. What if we were undercover OSHA agents? You got to say yes. We are for everybody OSHA. here has went through many many hours of rigorous. There rigorous is. training on the forklift. Good job, Kale. Okay, so what you're gonna do, Bronco, is you're oh, gonna yeah. you're gonna be in the hallway at school. Oh, sorry. 
Hold on, hold on. Bronco, Bronco just took off on the forklift, but I can relay this message for him I if think you want, the, or you can wait. I think the forklift is a good – look, Bronco can give tours of a beef-keeping facility, you know? So find the nerd, I like the way you think. Find the nerdy bee-loving girls or find the machine-loving girls. He can give forklift rides. Well, I'm thinking you go the badass route. I like the way you think. What's a badass route? Yeah, like he needs to be leaned up against a locker in the school hallway and just casually around some girls be like – I almost died last week. Yeah. It's a close call, but uh, Oh, I like the way Yeah. Uh, nothing a little And then I've gotta help I've gotta help like add on to these stories, right? Help them like help them give them more reasons for them to be true. You know? Yes, Kale. He Build got, the legends, got, my man. He got Build stung by legend. a bee and he just didn't even stop. I while he was running the forklift, I had to stab him with an epi pen. The guy just keeps going. He's the energizer bunny. Yeah. I Help build their relationship upon a mountain of lies. Yeah, yes. she's just like, what a man. Yeah. One, his name is Bronco. And two... He's named after a crazy horse, for heaven's sakes. He's got to be a good guy. Yeah, exactly. And uh, nothing will make someone like someone more than if they flirt with death and survive. Nothing's hotter than that. That's no. why all the women were crazy about evil can evil back in the day. Mm -hmm. Guy, right. Women, women love guys who flirt with death and come out unscathed. Exactly. And you, you've got to talk. You say you can even throw it in there. Bronco is the evil can evil of, of forklift of operators. <laughs> you know, like I've seen him. Yeah. Yeah. Build the legend. I like the way you boys are thinking. I tell you what, you guys, yeah, yeah, whoever's running that beekeeping what? place is running a tight ship. You guys haven't stopped oh, yeah, working we got, since you well, got on the see, phone. See, I, I tried to call you earlier, but then a uh, old boss man started yelling at us, so I had to hang up. Oh, that's what that was. So it's, uh, yeah, it's ship. <laughs> yeah. All it was was, um, and then click. Thanks for letting us know. But. Yeah, well, yeah, he uh, he's gone now, though, so we can do whatever we want. <laughs> yeah, I like that. Well, I think, yeah, just help Bronco out. One you know? legend at a time. Build one legend at a time. Start with Bronco. Once Bronco right. gets himself a gal, you can move on to your other uh, friends. I like the way I like that one. And one you, at a time. Don't and let I don't want to overcomplicate ourselves here. You know, with a name like Bronco, you should just tell everyone that his middle name is Danger. And I honestly I don't think they're uh, gonna bat an eye at that. I'm gonna be one question about that. What? There's not gonna be Oh no. Oh I d I don't know. I'm just um I'm just not very good at doing two things at once. Sorry, uh, forgive me. Boys. What's Bronco's actual middle name? Let's determine if danger is a better one. Bronco, what's Bronco, what's your middle name? What's your middle name, Bronco? Clive. Oh, sorry, Cliven is his actual middle name. Cliven. Cliven? <laughs> Bronco Cliven. Yeah. I mean, you say he sounds like an outlaw. He does. <laughs> is that there, Bronco Cliven? Yeah, he, he does. <laughs> We're building a lot of lore behind this guy. I like the way this is going here. He's going to be running through ladies like it's nobody's business here yeah. pretty soon. You guys, and by running lady, running through ladies, we mean lots of hand stuffs in movie theaters at age sixteen. You know, <laughs> right? There'd be no no inappropriate activities, of course. A absolutely not. <laughs> hey, you guys, take your money, get Bronco a leather jacket, work on his lean against the locker. Before you know it, one friend will have a gal, and then it's just domino effect from there. Okay. I like I like this plan, boys. All right. Well, thanks for calling in. Get back to work and uh, watch out for bees. Hey, I appreciate I appreciate your advice. I'll try not to get stung for you the rest of the day. Real good. Real good, Cal. We'll see you soon. All right. You boys watch out for deer. We'll see you. All right, my guy. Bye-bye. I like it, Miles. That is not where I thought that call was going, no. Charlie, but we are here and we're... <laughs> It's very funny. It, it's like high school relationships don't matter. No, <laughs> not at I didn't want to have the heart to tell Kayla that. No. I usually wait to their early 20s to say, eh, it's not going to last. You do you say know? that a lot. Yeah. yeah. Just for funsies, you know. And if it, if it doesn't last, I was right. And if it holds that test, that just uh, whatever doesn't break, it makes it stronger, you yep. know. And we know what I'm having regrets about, Charlie. Uh, what? Is that I didn't name my kid Bronco. 
Cliven Montplaisier. I mean, God, dude. Man, it's just... Uh, when he said oh, his real name... We already name, got a social security card, too. Like, it's going to be a uh, lot of paperwork to change it. But you know what? You're going to do the right thing. I know. Yep. So he is no longer August. He is Bronco Cliven. <laughs> I mean, that's... Uh, <laughs> Should we take another caller? Let's take another caller. Ben, how you doing? Yes, sir. Pretty good. How are y'all? Doing good, my guy. So you threw out a y'all there. I'm guessing you're from uh, somewhere in the southern part of the Midwest, perhaps southern Ohio. Southern Ohio? Not quite. A little farther south. Kentucky? Kentucky, we're getting closer, but we need to go farther. Tennessee. Tennessee. No, I'm not from the Midwest. Where the hell? Well, I let you on a little there. I apologize. Where, where, are, you, where are you from? Houston, Houston, Texas. Okay. Well, so it's a lot farther south than Ohio. I get it. Well, it's a lot farther south and a little west. Well, why don't you belly up to the bar with us? Tell us what's on your mind, Ben. All right, well, I'm actually up here in Chicago right now. And this weekend here, I'm going to be shooting bunker traps in the Junior Olympics. Oh, and wow. And the problem that I have. Congrats, by the way. Trying That's to stay sweet. in a good headspace when I'm competing. I was wondering if y'all maybe had some tips so I could stay focused and do a good job. Well, you're in luck. You're in luck, Ben, because you're talking to two guys who really know their way around firearms and uh, and we we know how to maintain a good headspace because um, we've hunted deer before. <laughs> we both shoot our guns roughly two to three times a year. Sometimes not at all. Okay. Well, but uh, no, at least two to three times, Charlie. You're at least missing that many. At least times. two or three. That's good enough. Yeah. Um. Okay. So. You're wondering how to get in the right me- mental headspace to competitively shoot trap. At the Junior Olympics. Well, Charlie, I mean, you and I got a lot of experience in competitive shooting. You know, we go deer hunting, like you said. What's some stuff to get you in the right headspace when you go deer hunting? Maybe that's where we start. You got to start with a nap. Okay. Yes. Make sure you start with a nap, Ben. Um, I understand that may sound counterintuitive, but you want sort of that bell or whistle or whenever it's your time to go to startle you. Because it's that sort of mind space that puts you just in the in the elm. It, it gives you that edge, you know. And yes, you're gonna miss your first two or three shots, but that third one, I guarantee you, you'll hit the edge of your target. Yes. Yep. I think in that same is, vein, is Charlie. Is there any ideal nap length? We want like thirty minutes, two hours. What are we looking for? Oh, it just depends what you were doing last night. Okay. <laughs> I mean, you don't ever dictate a nap. I'll tell you that right now. The nap dictates you. So you have to naturally nap. Yeah. So you get there early so you can, as soon as you feel that nap coming on, you want to go down. Okay. Put yourself down. So- All right. Self cuddling or whatever you call it. Soothing. Soothing. Self soothing. All right. And then, um, yeah, just make sure you're in earshot or have a buddy there where if you don't wake up, from the uh i don't know what your bell or whistle is but if you don't wake up you need a buddy with a sharp elbow you make sure you find your sharp elbow friend to just give you a, uh. and you are right charlie i do my best shooting when i stumble out of a nap suddenly yes if i if i'm still a little delirious and i'm staring down the barrel that's when i do my best shooting a thousand percent and the nice thing is you get you hit the target perfect you don't hit it even better you won't remember it. Yeah, you're so, not even, yeah, you're not even fully awake. Oh, no, I like right. that idea. Yeah. 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 So you're nervous because you don't want to fail, you know, but you gotta remember if you don't remember it, did you actually fail? Yeah. Well, and that's like a great right. a great I'm not saying that I do this, but if you do fall asleep and suddenly startle, wake up and you shoot and you miss, you just tell everyone that you didn't see anything all day. And then you're like, no, that shot wasn't me. That was further north. Right. And then, so in your scenario, you if you wake up, you miss all your targets, you bomb at the Junior Olympics, just tell everyone it got canceled due to weather. You know, it's the same church, different pew situation. Mm-hmm. And they're going to believe you. 
I promise you that. Yeah. Um, Aside for that, do you have uh, yourself a a good book or something? Because it's going to get pretty boring (laughs) with all the other people like shooting, you know, and if your nap. Oh, that's a good idea. I'll have to go pick up a book. Yeah. Yeah, because it sometimes it's tough after you are startled awake by your nap. You get that adrenaline going. You can't go back to sleep. So I would bring a book, or you, you know, to get that second nap in. Yeah, or a deck of cards. Or start if you, yeah, playing if, solitaire, that you, would be nice. If you got a range Ooh, finder, solitaire. if you got a range finder, just start picking out things and guessing how many yards away it is, and then see if you're right. You know, do that over and over. Yeah, I like to do that in the deer stand. Yep. Um, the other thing is have lots of snacks. You know, it's hard to shoot with a empty stomach. Yeah. And I'm talking about cookies, donuts, jerky, s- jerky sandwiches, extra salt. Just bring a few salt packets just just for fu- you never. It, well, you don't want to cramp up either, Charlie. You don't want to cramp up. And some things you ever wonder, will this salt? And sometimes they do put a little salt on a cookie. Yeah. 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 A little sweet and salty situation. I like it. Yeah. Uh, how old are you? Uh, I am 21. So oh. This is my one and only chance at this because I age out like right away. Well, okay. You're well, 21. I was Drink the you, night before. Uh, I was going to say, I thought you were like 12. Yeah, we were holding <laughs> back on you, my guy. Okay, yeah. So you're going to want to get absolutely blitzed the night before, go to bed at like 3, wake up at 5, and that's going to also help induce a nap later in the day. It is. Um, right, get one of those really good naps. Yeah. yeah, yeah. There's no better nap than sitting in a deer stand hungover for the night before on three hours of sleep. No, I mean, you fall asleep like that. And something about that cool air, just it's like you don't even need ibuprofen. You're you're like the <laughs> you're environmentally being cooled. It's mm-hmm. it's awesome. Um, so this is your last chance to compete. Have you competed before? Uh, so I do a lot of American trap. Uh, which is different from like Olympic trap. This will be my second match shooting Olympic trap. And how are you doing so far? Uh, I, I'm feeling pretty good about it. I've been practicing, learning how to do it for probably the last eight months. So hopefully we can do decent. But the last time you did it, how did it See go? How I turn out. Uh, I actually just shot like eight rounds of this a few hours ago, and I'm feeling pretty good. We're hitting a lot of 22s, 23s. We shoot out of like rounds of 25. Okay. So 22, 23s are pretty good for me. What's the hardest shot for you? Uh, so you get some targets that go like really hard right or really hard left. Those those kind of hurt. They're tough to get to in time. What is what's like your tip for your average person doing trap? Like you, you're av- just starting out. Like what are some common mistakes people make, and how would you solve them? Let's see some common mistakes. You're probably going to move too fast. You're just going to like throw the gun through the target. You're not going to hit anything. Mm-hmm. So you really just need to slow down and really like see the target. Okay. Mm. See the target, be the target. Yeah. See the bird, hit the bird. And a lot of um, people. Other mistakes, your stance. Your stance is really important. We're, we're not working with like a rifle stance here. You got to like really get those knees into it, get a lot of hip action. Oh, okay. Uh, what do you mean by hip action? Uh, so you really want to like turn, get all your like horizontal movement with your like legs and hips. You don't want to like move, be moving with your arms because you lose a lot of like connection there. It's going to throw you off. So I got to look like Dak Prescott warming up on the field is what you're saying. Yeah, it's all right here. Right, right. It's right here, Miles. If you're doing that, you're doing it right. So legs and hips, legs and is, hips. Because I would usually just do like this, Charlie. Look, I would usually just go like this. Yeah, no, it's a lot of arm action. You you're know? all flimsy there, but this you got full control. Okay, a lot Look at of that. And that's important to stretch. Stretching's got to be a good one. Yeah, are you stretching? Oh, it's important to stretch. You know, you'll you'll pull some stuff. You know, you t- holding you, those guns for a while, you'll hurt your back. Not you, gonna lie. You oh. have pulled the muscle shooting trap. When so when you shoot American trap, you shoot a lot of targets in one day. You might shoot two, three hundred. Um, so when you're out there on a line in this Texas heat, it gets pretty hot, and it's not a fun time. Like you, like you said, you got to bring your salt packets to stay hydrated. Yeah. That helps with the cramps. Yeah, but it's a rare occurrence, you know. <clears throat> now some people will uh, see the bead at the end of their uh, 
gun and try to do something with that with the uh, target. What's your thought on that? How do you correct that? Take the beat off. You don't need to beat. I know, but let's say they they're not going to take the beat off. So they're <laughs> they just ignore it all together. Is that it? Just do your best to ignore it. Pretend you can't see it. Try to look over it. Look around it. Act like it's not there. You shouldn't really be looking at like the bee or your barrel at all. Just look at the target. When I first started, that's that was the mistake I was making. And then I was told basically to swing through it, which I still don't know right. what swing through it means, but it helped and it kind of clicked after that. So I, but I know that that I, right. that's sort of a common mistake is people use the bead on their gun. But what what do you line up to the target? What part of the gun? So you don't aim a shotgun like you aim a rifle. You point a shotgun. So what? when you're holding it right appropriately it's going to move like with your arms when you're moving with the target. Right. Like move with your eyes. So as soon as you like see the target and you can pick out like a specific spot on that bird, you should just shoot, pull the trigger, but keep moving the gun. Like you were saying to swing through it. If you stop, it's going to beat you out. You're going to shoot behind it. Right, right, right. So that, that I think is better than the, probably the thing I said, but you said you'll shoot 300 shots in a day. How do you keep your shoulder from not falling off? You do it a lot and you get used to it. But you're not shooting like heavy, like hunting loads. Yeah. You know, these are they're 12 gauge shells, but maybe like an ounce, ounce and an eighth, depending on who you are, maybe like 1200 to 1250 feet per second. Got it. So it's not, it's not super hard, but it's just a lot of volume. Yeah. Just build up a callus on that shoulder, Charlie. <clears throat> that's exactly it. That's a, that's my new aspiration in life. I want callus shoulders. You know, it's not a, what yeah, I've got a callus on the index of my finger from pulling a trigger. That is like the, maybe the biggest flex of all time. I got a That's maybe a, a line from a rap song. I got a callus on my trigger finger is pretty baller. Yeah, you really shouldn't oh, there get one there if you're like doing it right. But if you um, you can kind of like pull the trigger a little funky if the gun doesn't fit you super well, and it like rubs on that like joint, kind of. Yeah, Does that makes sense. Yeah. Huh. Okay. Um. Last question I want to know: What has been your pregame sort of ritual before you called us and realized you had to take a nap? I really like listening to music. Um. Some like classical stuff. Oh, I or occasionally we'll get like some EDM or just like white noise and just like blare that really loud. So my head's like full of nothing. Oh man. Wow. I'm surprised you're not listening to trap music. <laughs> Ooh. Did you see what I did there? No, don't do a whole lot of that. I see what you did there. Okay. Yeah, it was really fun. Um, so that's it. You just listen to music. You don't, what else? Yeah. Um, I, I just like the music. Now it's different. So in like USA shooting, like what I'm going to do here, you can't listen to music. You just have to kind of raw dog that. <laughs> so these help tips, you know, taking a nap, find a book, keep me, keep me occupied off, off the range. That'll help keep you together. Why can't you listen to music? That's just the rule they have. That's so weird. I think it, yeah, they do it because if you have like, earbuds or whatever or like hearing protection that's bluetooth you can get like other people connected to it talking to you and like coaching you and stuff and they don't want that oh okay yeah Char- charlie's shooting and i'm cheating and giving him stuff in his uh, uh shoot better yeah <laughs> aim more at the target go. charlie <laughs> pull the tri- swing through it yeah pull the trigger at the correct time don't use your bead yeah Move your hips, not your wrists. Be better. You know? Yeah, I can't. I feel like that that would just be a disadvantage yeah, having someone like, in your then ear. Then all of a sudden, Charlie's just like, shut the hell yeah, up. Yeah, just drop a bud, you know? Well, there was actually a point in time. Yeah. USA shooting changes these rules a lot. And at one point, because you couldn't listen to music while you shot, if you do a shoot off to see like who wins overall, they would just play music while you're shooting to try to distract you. Wow. Oh, really? So they just yeah. that that's kind of so that's so that that's just kind of a, a a last ditch situation where where you mean they they'll like throw music on as sort of like a a finale to distract you and then see right. who can shoot the best. And like with a that. finale, they'll just like get some speakers out there. Okay, play some stuff. 
because then you can't hear the thing and hear it go. Right. Got it. Huh. Well, that's fascinating, man. We're excited for you. I yeah. think, uh, I don't know. I think you're going to do well. I can feel it in my bones. What about you, Charlie? I'm feeling good. Good luck. Thanks for the shooting tips uh, for everybody. And uh, you're welcome for the uh, pregame sort of meditation ritual we gave you. Uh, yeah. Remember to. I think I got the pregame down. Good, good, good. And good luck. We're excited for you. And we hope you win. We'll be rooting for you, cheering you along here. And then after that, yeah, thank you all. it's the main Olympics. We'll see you there. Good the luck. Main Olympics. Yeah. LA 2028. Heck yeah, go. dude. All Got right. on the calendar. Good luck. Yes, sir. I'll see y'all. Y'all have fun. All right. Thanks, man. I'm excited for him. Yeah. I like how he's got the Olympics on his calendar. LA. I didn't know the next Olympics are in Los Angeles. So you have to be in order to participate in the real Olympics. You got to be older than 21. I guess so. He says this is the last time he can do it. So like he's sport by sport. Yeah, yeah. probably. Yeah. Interesting though, you think for the junior Olympics you get the tattoo with the Olympic rings? Uh, uh yeah. Kind of, yeah. Where would tattoo? you get that? Just really small rings. It's yeah. junior, yeah. Right, 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 right. Yeah. Tiny rings. Yeah. Crit and crayon. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Handwritten in crayon rings. That's kind of funny. <laughs> well, should we take another caller, Charlie? Let's do it, Miles. Kick off your tailgating season with Tippy Cow's Orange Cream, ladies and gents. It's the perfect treat for game days in Wisconsin or Iowa. After a day of grilling up your favorite tailgate foods, Tippy Cow's Orange Cream adds a nice touch to your game day feast. It's creamy. It's orange. It's good. Celebrate as you cheer on your team. Miles, I'm waiting for the... And if you've ever come up with outrageous tailgate traditions or debated the best grilling techniques, <sighs> Tippy Cow will make your game day celebrations even better. Here's the toast, Charlie. What is it? Here's the toast. Here's to the tip, the, the, the kickoff of tailgate season. Grills fired up. Teams cheering on. Tippy Cow's Orange Cream to add a refreshing twist to the festivities. Cheers to a season full of good food, great friends, and, and unforgettable game, game days. days. Cheers. Cheers, Miles. Oh, my gosh. Guys, as the kids head back to school, it's a good time to think about safety. It's always a good time to think about safety, Charlie, is it not? Miles, if you're not thinking about safety, I'm not you're sure not very if you're very safe. Yeah. Yeah. From playground spills to school related scrapes, Nicolay Law is here to help. I hate it when you fall off the monkey bars. Yeah, or uh, maybe you're on a swing and you uh, jump off the swing to get some extra height and you break your wrists and you're in the third grade. Not good. Or you're 32. Yeah, or Still 32. not good. Cry like a baby. They're experts in personal injury cases and can make sure you get the help you need if things go sideways. If things go awry. Let's make the school year a safer school year. And more smooth. <laughs> and remember, if accidents happen, Nicolay Law got your back every step of the way. Yeah, Cameron. Cameron from Ohio. Well, thanks, Cameron. my guy. Belly on up to this bar. Tell us what's on your mind. Um, just wanted to kind of chit chat back and forth. You know, Ohio being the melting pot of the Midwest, in my opinion, I feel like. There's a lot of different viewpoints from like um, that I would have that say you would have Charlie from Wisconsin, you know? Yeah, different viewpoints. Like what? Um, kind of like the Amish. <laughs> <laughs> <What>? <laughs> yeah. What about the Amish, so, Cameron? <laughs> So uh, I, we have a good population of the Amish where I'm at, uh, Mennonites and German Baptists and whatnot. And, you know, I've always kind of wondered if they have, like, secret wars against each other, you know? Because <laughs> they're, nice, they're all nice people, 
on a day to day basis. But what if, like, you know, Ezekiel <laughs> looked at Jebediah a little funny and they got to, like, uh, find out who can churn butter faster? You know? <laughs> <laughs> this actually is great timing, Cameron, because we are at a bar in Minnesota that's about a mile away from an Amish community. So we are right in the heart of Amish country here. So there was a guy who came in and wanted a Mountain Dew earlier. Um, so this is great timing, by the way. So you're wondering. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah. So you're wondering if you think that they have uh, civil wars in Amish communities. Is that correct? Yeah, pretty much. Well, you called the right place because Charlie and I know a ton about the Amish. Absolutely. In fact, we might do a belly to up on the street. I might see how far this uh, cord runs, and I can go find someone to answer that question for you right away. No, I don't have enough cord. And also, I think that would involve electricity. So the situation is, I'm sure that there is fighting, you know, like there's um, there's bad blood. There's all of it. There's got to be because we're all uh, I'm going to be honest, Charlie. What? That's the next Game of Thrones. Ooh, Amish is is a civil war show set in an Amish community. And the and the the, the well, power you guys struggle. Ever watch that, uh, you guys ever watch that Amish Mafia TV show? No, I didn't. There's an Amish yeah, Mafia. There was a TV show. Yeah, there was a TV show. It's called Amish Mafia. And I, for the longest time, I always thought that that shit was a hoax. <laughs> like, there's no way. First of all, they got cameras. And how would they run, like, a secret mafia? Well, let me ask you this. You say, how could they run a secret mafia? How much do you really know about the Amish? Um, I'd say a, a good bit. I know a couple fellers, but... Not that much, because you, know, you, to... you, you stereotyped them and said that they all just churn butter all day. So I'm guessing you don't know too much. So I think you listen to one Weird Al song, and that's what you're going <laughs> off of. Oh, Weird Al. <laughs> Maybe. He, he does play a good Ezekiel. Well, to Miles's point, I think it's probably, you know, you got to get to know him better, and then you can be uh, our expert on that. Cool. Yeah, that sounds like a good, uh, something I'd be interested in doing, getting to know the Amish real well. I wonder if they'll teach me how to build a barn in two days. <laughs> I have seen those TikToks as well. It is, they are fascinating. Those guys can work. Have you ever? I'm amazed at what the Amish can do in a short amount of time. I mean, they're incredible. Have you ever seen the uh, Amish move a barn? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like they get like three hundred guys and just lift guys? up a barn and move it. Yeah, God, that's incredible. You know what? I'm going to take that back. I don't think they have time to get in fights with each other. They need every single Amish dude they can get to come over and move their barns. You know, they've probably got a lot of alliances with all the other types of Amish. I don't even know how many types of Amish are. Maybe I should start talking to some Amish because I don't know what the hell I'm talking about either. All I really know is that Weird Al song myself. So. Oh yeah. yeah. So well, said you're in Minnesota today. Uh, I have a family member who lived in Minnesota there for a while, and she said that she lived in a neighborhood where you'd have a nice neighbor, a creepy neighbor, and a nice neighbor, and that they would uh all had these, like, block parties, and they would kind of outcast the creepy neighbors. I That's not very I Midwest can't, nice of them to do, is I it? can't imagine why. <laughs> um, well, maybe he wasn't creepy. He was just way too Midwest nice, right, Charlie? Midwest yeah. nice and creepy, there's a fine line. Uh, you know, you can easily misconstrue one for the other. But you should be on the lookout because, you know, if it's creepy, it's going to get creepy. What kind of creepy are we talking? What was he doing that was sounding alarms? So when the pandemic was happening, it would be, um, they would, and the toilet paper was all gone. You couldn't buy toilet paper anywhere. Kind of at the start, 
they would always offer my family members to come down to the cellar and grab a case of toilet paper. <laughs> they had I've, to come hey, down to the <laughs> Midwest nice or creepy, Charlie. Yeah, I, you know, listen, if I'm home or not home, it's completely fine. Uh, why don't you, you just go into my cellar, okay? Now, make sure no one's watching you, because I don't want everyone to know that they can just come all willy-nilly in my cellar. But I tell you what, if you want to come down there, just you you don't even have to ask. You're welcome to my cellar at any time. I'm a, I think that's Midwest nice, Charlie. I think that might be Midwest nice. You know, if it was his garage instead of his cellar, I think this would be having a totally different conversation. Yeah. <clears throat> I I mean, you know, some the word cellar gives off creepy vibes, but some people, they just... But also, been- cellars are kind of fancy, you know? It's like you're classy if you have a cellar. Yeah. They- uh, if he had said crawl space, creepy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, crawl space is creepy. That's exactly it. Crawl space is like, unless it's a tornado, don't go in anyone's crawl space, you know? Um, right. But- also, I love when he was like, he was acting like this is a Minnesota thing. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, yeah. You know, I haven't heard that happening around here, but those Minnesotans, I tell you what, they're, they got creepy sellers trying to give away the toilet paper. Yeah, you there's there's always a different uh side of the coin on that when you're uh I don't I don't know. I, you could easily have that situation in Ohio, I feel. Um I'd say the people out here about 50/50. <laughs> we are kind of on the edge of the Midwest, kind of a state above the south and really close to the east, so we get kind of like a potluck of people. Yeah, I guess it just depends on your area. Yeah, it's true. That is very true of Ohio. Where are you driving to right now? I'm actually in a loader. I am at work. <laughs> We're getting everyone at work these days. Are you loader certified? I am heavy equipment, pass trained, yes. I like that. Good answer. It's like Family Feud. Good answer. Good answer. Um. Well. <laughs> yeah, I'm a I'm a miner, an aggregate miner. So I'm just playing with dirt and rock all day. Yeah, you're bringing. Uh, I'm a concrete guy, so thank you for your service. Oh, thank you. You keep me busy. Yeah, that's right. Um. Also. A lot of cellars are made out of aggregate and concrete. So, you know, kind of... Uh, it all comes full circle. <clears throat> yeah, full circle. And the, the Amish got to have the, uh, the gravel to put the new barn on. So that's always nice. That's true. You know, I, I'm glad you called in today asking about the Amish because I feel like a lot of us, we see them and we might wave to them. We should wave to them, but, you know, not a lot of us take the time to go over there and have a sit-down conversation. So, yeah, any of our uh, Amish listeners, if you're listening out there, we see you and we thank you for all of your beautiful furniture. We absolutely do. You can make a heck of a table uh, or a bed. Now, is it is it rude? Is it rude to fly past them on the road, or are they used to it by now? Uh, give them a two finger wave, and then that's I think that's good enough. You can fly by. Give them a wave. Give them some distance. You know those those horses they can be erratic, so you know just just give them a little distance, and then uh, you can slow down a scotch. But um, yeah, I tell you what, you know who's gonna have it figured out when AI takes over the Amish. <laughs> These computers aren't going to know a damn thing about them. Yeah, they're going to be like, wow, they are the superior being here. I know, they right? They don't even need us. What they the don't hell? Need us. How do we get the Amish? Charlie, <laughs> that's your answer, dude. You're wondering how to not die from robots. Go join the Amish community. I go, As long as we don't turn into nuclear winter, they're not going to know a damn thing about me. I'll just get a beard. I'll fool any robot. Yes. You, yes. Ever, you ever fool face ID? 
Do I? Yeah. No. You ever look at face ID it don't open? Say that's not your Only face? Only if I'm really hung over. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that happens. That's always a sad day, you know? Like the day your face ID don't open by your face. Oh, well. Anyways, well, we appreciate you calling in today and uh, have a good day in the loader. You're kind of, I kind of got loader envy. You know, it sounds like an awesome day to just spend a day in a big machinery, just moving stuff from point A to point B. And thinking about the Amish. So you're living the dream, man. Keep her loading. Oh, yeah. I appreciate taking the call, fellas. You betcha. We'll talk to you soon. Well, Charlie, it's another good call on the Belly Up podcast. Yeah. You're, you're, I can see your wheels are turning. My wheels were turning it's on It's like, that. oh, shit, I should be in the Amish community. You know, I've thought that many a times. It, it, the Amish, is it's an interesting way of living, you know? There's a lot of hard times, though. You can't forget about the hard well, times. Well, what's harder time? Getting killed by a robot or churning your own butter? <sighs> That's true. That's true. I mean... I think guys have it easier. It'd be a lot tougher to give childbirth as an Amish. That's, that know? is true. Yeah. Um, they Very got it point. tough. Yeah. But yeah. Um, anyways, <laughs> we're, not for us to figure out, Miles. That's a uh, day for another time. Yeah. We are just the people who bring things to light. We are not necessarily solving the world's problems. Right, Charles? Precisely, my guy. Well, guys, thanks for tuning in to another episode of the Belly Up Podcast. Remember to tip your bartender, and we'll see you in the next one. Yes, indeed.